All right then gang, so far we've been using Strappy's REST API and endpoints to fetch data using the use fetch hook, and that's completely fine if you want to work that way. But now I want to take a sidestep and I want to show you how to use GraphQL with Strappy instead to query and fetch our data and how that works inside our React application. So to begin with, we need to install the GraphQL plugin for Strappy. So head to the admin area and then into the marketplace over here. Then click on the download button next to GraphQL. This should download and install the GraphQL plugin for this instance of Strappy. Now, sometimes this takes a little while to install and you might get a message saying something like the server is taking a long time to restart or something like that. If that happens, don't worry, just sit it out and it will finish after about a minute at most. If it doesn't install after about three minutes, just try refreshing the page and installing it again to see if it works. So then, now that's installed for us, Strapit is set up and ready to work with GraphQL. Now behind the scenes, it's generated all the GraphQL schemas it needs to run on the server for our content types. And you can see them in the exports folder inside GraphQL right here. So this contains schemas for our content types, the user content type and other things that Strapi uses. And this is what Strapi will use to handle our queries when we use GraphQL to fetch data. Now, before we start making queries using GraphQL in our application, I just want to cover the basics of GraphQL for those that need a refresh or an introduction. And to do that, we can use a GraphQL playground tool that Strapi gives to us to test out GraphQL queries. It's a tiny bit like Postman, but for GraphQL instead. Now, to see that tool, open up a browser tab and go to localhost, port 1337, then forward slash GraphQL and hit enter. So then, over here on the left is where we write our queries. Then we press the play button to run them and the response is going to appear on the right over here. Now, if you don't feel like you need a refresh on GraphQL, then by all means, feel free to skip to the next lesson. But for the rest of us, let's try out a few simple queries. So then my friends, GraphQL is a query language. It gives us a different way to query data from a server than a REST API. In a REST API, we would use something like Fetch or Axios to make requests to a specific endpoint that sends back a bunch of data, right? Instead, in GraphQL, we construct what's known as queries to be very specific about the data that we want to get back from the server. And it's much more flexible than using a REST API. And it's really helpful when you start to work with relational data, as we'll see later on in the course. So what does a query look like? Well, typically we start it with the query keyword, and then we give our query a name, which I'm going to call get reviews. And then after that, we need to open up some curly braces and the actual query, what we want to get goes inside these curly braces. So all we need to do is say what data we want, what types of data. Now I want to get all of the reviews. So I just say reviews and this name right here must match the content type that we have. Now that on its own is not enough. We also have to specify what fields from the reviews that we want to get. So we open our curly braces again and specify those inside. For example, if I just want the title field of each review, I just say title. And now this is a completely valid query. So I could press play now and we'll see the response from Strapi on the right. And we can see that it's a JSON object with a data property. Now inside that is a reviews property, which is an array of reviews. Each review is an object and the only property inside is the title, which we specified we wanted. So now we have a list of reviews with just their titles. If we want more fields, we have to specify them in the query. So after title, I might want also the ID. So a comma separate these, I could do the ID and also after that, the rating as well. So now I'm saying, get me all the reviews of each one, get me the title, the ID and the rating. And now if we press play, Strapi sends us back the list of reviews with the title, ID and rating of each review included. So this is really cool. GraphQL allows us to ask for only the data fields that we want. I can also add the body field into this if I wanted to. So let's do that at the end. And then once we've done that, we can hit play. And this time the body field is added to the response that we get back. So 
This is the kind of query we'll be making soon from our React application to get the data we need. Now, just quickly, if you want, you can take away the query keyword and the name that we give to this query. And we just leave the curly braces to surround the rest. And this will still work. We don't technically need the query keyword and the name of the query, but I will be using them because they're going to allow us to later on use query variables, which is a way to pass dynamic values into a query. And we'll see how they work later on. Anyway, that's a quick overview of the basics and how to make queries. We will be diving deeper into these queries over the coming videos, and some of them will become a little bit more complex, especially when we start to work with relational data. The next step, though, is to set up our React application to be able to make these types of GraphQL queries, and we're going to do that in the next lesson.